Good morning. Welcome to day two of Sonoy 2023. Um, today, I guess the common theme is collaboration and building community. And I am going today to give you a talk about um, this concept of circle composition and specifically the iteration that we did with the o open source audio meeting Cologne in February 2021. And I'm going to take you through my experience doing it, um, my creative process, I guess. And um, at the very end, I'm going to encourage you to do it yourself. Hello, Internet. <laughs> you too. Um, yeah. Um, so first of all, maybe uh, one or two words about myself and what to expect today. I am a professional musician. And I have been a Linux user since 2007. And for most of these years since then, I did not actually really do that much music on my computer, just due to me being classically trained and most of my creative endeavors taking place in the uh, acoustic and or analog world. Uh, but then this little thing called COVID happened and <laughs> from one day to another, I had to do all my jobs uh, digitally and I think since I had been a Linux user for such a long time at that point I adapted quite quickly and I learned uh, Arduino and uh, the whole setup thing with Jack and stuff and like that and ever since then I have been able to create music on my computer and I did in this instance and um, I think it was quite cool and I want to tell you about it. Um, so we did a project um, uh, with the concept of circle composition. What is circle composition? Um, um, in this case, we were four people, um, these four people, <laughs> and we wanted to create four pieces or four songs. And we had decided that these uh, songs should um, consist of three layers. The first layer being um, the bass or low frequencies and the rhythm. So, for example, if you'd have a band set up, that would be, of course, the drum set and the bass. But depending on what style you're going for, it could be really anything. Just low frequencies and some kind of rhythm, however you want to interpret that. And then the second layer of all these pieces should be the uh, myth frequencies or and or the harmonies. So, again, if you're in a band context, think of guitars, synthesizers, um, keyboards in general, stuff like that. And the third layer um, should be the, um, the melody and or high frequencies. So again, in the band context, this would be the singer or uh, the lead guitar or, um, I don't know, a trumpet, <laughs> whatever you have, uh, you have it. And um, then there's so to speak, a fourth layer, the mixing part, because we decided we wanted to do the whole project in Arduino uh, as a recording project or a um, product music production project. Um, and um, yeah, there had to be some mixing at the very end of it. So how it worked was that uh, all these four people started on day one of the project with their respective ideas for the first layer, for the bass and rhythm. And you'd, had, you'd have three days to uh, come up with something and um, put it in your Arduino project. And um, then at the end of day three, you'd have to pass it on to the next person in the circle. And at the same time, you'd receive whatever the person behind you in the circle had come up with. And then for the next three days, you'd have time to come up with the second layer. Um, you know getting whatever the person before you uh, gave you and <laughs> thinking about how what would fit or what you think would be nice on that. And at the end of day six, you'd have to pass that on and would again receive something that the first two persons behind you in the circle had come up with and you'd have to make the third layer and at the end of day nine, pass it on. And uh, during the last three days of the project, you everybody would mix um, what they'd gotten. If you don't already understand how that works, no, uh, no worries. I'm going to take you through the whole pro process. 
um, this was the um, uh, how we were grouped, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, Daniela is not here today, but Chris and Niels are, as you can tell. <laughs> oh, and Niels today is um, has uh, uh, was uh, nice enough to agree to kind of DJ the audio projects for me today, so that, so do all the clicky clicky stuff, so that, that I can stalk. <laughs> uh, thank you, Niels. Um, but he was also part of the project, and um, yeah. Did I forget something about uh, circle composing? No. I, if you have questions at this point, you can ask them. No. Okay. So, the very first uh, layer, the bass and rhythm layer, um, this was uh, uh, the point where I, I don't really know where the idea ca came from, um, but I thought about uh, this inception by Christopher Nolan soundtrack thing where there are, there are these really droning <laughs> sounds uh, was quite heavily featured in the trailer as well for other people who did not see the film and i wanted to do something like that and i just researched how to do that and found somebody who you know anal had analyzed it and what you basically do is just um you layer on top of each other uh, all the low instruments in the orchestra so um You'd have the whole lower brass section with uh, the tuba, the trombone, uh, lower plate uh, trumpets, the French horns. Um, you'd have uh, the woodwinds uh, bassoons as well. And then the, from the string section, the double basses, and from the percussion section, the timpani. And I think I used some other instrument as well in there just to fill up the sound. Um, and when I think about orchestral, um, an orchestral setup, I imme my brain, because I'm classically trained, immediately thinks of it in terms of sheet music. So what I did was actually open up MuseScore and just jotted it all down. MuseScore at that point was something different than it is now. And, um, and uh, just to get this the structure right in my head. And I had uh, initially thought that I'd uh, export this as MIDI and um, find, a <laughs> find a library somewhere for orchestral instruments and just do it like that. But um, I uh, quite, I, yeah, that was just a whole other kind uh, ton of, ton of, I don't know. Yes, and um, so I uh, decided to do the following. I just exported what, because MuseScore already has a library, um, and what came out of there I thought was not that bad at all, and so I just exported the MP3 out of MuseScore and put it in. I, I um, uh, did, uh, I think, four, yeah, four different um, sections of the orchestra, I guess, um, and yeah, just export it and put it in Ardua. And uh, this is how it sounds. Maybe we can listen to part of or the whole piece. finished yet. <laughs> this 
isn't there like something even after that? No, there isn't. Oh, no, there isn't. Oh, OK, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was a lot, about two and a half years ago. Um, yeah, so you get the gist. Um, and yeah, this is what I passed on at the end of day three. And um, oh, what I forget to mention, you did not know, of course, what happened to whatever you passed on until the very end of the project. So you as well will not know what happened to that and until the very end of this talk. And um, yeah, so at this point, we're going to skip a step. We're going to skip the step where I received some bass and rhythm section and or layer uh, and did the uh, second layer of harmonies on top of it just because of time reasons and we're going to skip skip to the part where i received the bass and rhythm and or harmony or mid frequency layer and was in charge of doing the uh, higher frequencies and or melodies and so we're going to listen to what i received yeah just the whole thing yeah, I received it from uh, Daniela and then Niels. So Daniela did the bass stuff and Niels did the harmonies. No. Oh, it's, step three. it's step three. We skipped uh, step I'll two. See, yeah, 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 no problem. <laughs> we skipped the step two just of time reasons. Sega! Okay, so receiving this, I was really quite happy. And I think this piece, even without the first three seconds, really slaps you in the face with it being video game music, I thought. That was my association. And so, um, I, and I think it's really two parts, in my opinion. Um, so this is the first part. And this part, I thought, was um, fighting game music, so like Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat. And what I wanted to do there is in the very beginning, in the intro, I wanted to have an announcer. Um, and so I just asked a friend of mine um, who's, who's got a really nice 
deep voice and um, uh, asked him to do to record himself uh, doing saying something. You will hear everything I'm talking about right now in a second. Um, uh, record himself uh, doing something, and on top of his recording, I I put this through a bit crusher just to make it fit like the whole 16-bit uh, music kind of feel of the piece. Um, and for the most part of this, I think, fighting game music, I wanted to write a melody. And um, um, I, what I did to come up with how to write the melody, I just sat down for one evening and listened to a bunch of 16-bit uh, music and just tried to analyze how the melodies were crafted. And something that uh, stuck out to me is, was that uh, there's a lot of third parallels, and for the melodies themselves, uh, um, like a lot of octave uh, jumps. And so I wrote something that I think did that. <laughs> and um, I recorded that, or I d did that uh, through um, a Korg synthesizer, the um, Micro Korg XL, that I just had at home, and um, um, yeah, did did that, <laughs> and then for this part, for the second part, my association was um, really that it was an adventure game, and so I was just taken back to my teen years, I guess, and um, um, I, I myself played a lot of. Uh, Monkey Island and uh, Day of the Tentacle, and I had this uh, thought of uh, the, the intro of Day of the Tentacle, where the tentacle drinks out of the poisoned river and says, I feel like I could take on the world. And I wanted to take that and make a melody out of it. And um, it's this part is quite triumphant, I think, sounding, and I wanted to write a triumphant um, melody with it. And I recorded myself uh, through a vocoder, again, through this microcork, which has a already a cute little stick-on microphone <laughs> for the vocoder part. And um, um, yeah, you're going to hear that. And at the... Oh, no, I'm sorry. This is what I did here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is what I did here. And this is the triumphant part. This part is the part in the adventure where someone is checking out a new area in my mind, and um, I did this thing where um, there's a narrator uh, uh, talking about um, the really obvious stuff, so like narrating what they are doing, or maybe um, saying things like, "You maybe I should do this and that to hint the player into doing something. Yeah, so um, these are the three things I really did. At the very end, something else happened. I I guess you can't really understand it because the vocoder is really, really, really distorting the voice and you can't really understand it, but it's okay. So we're going to listen to what I wrote. And this is already the, the mixed version of it, so the fourth layer, so to speak, because just because the audio projects are just already... We, yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's listen to what I wrote. Sega! <laughs> Welcome, choose your fighter. Four, three, two, one. one, 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 one. is happening here. Where is 
is everybody? Is that? Is that blood? Maybe I should check out the basement. Chances are there is something useful in there. I hear something. Is that a voice? Is someone singing? <laughs> That is two and a half years ago, the whole project, and when I when we went through uh, these projects again, I thought it was just so, they were so cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was uh, step three, and now uh, follows uh, the part where I um, was uh, responsible for mixing. I um, received the three layers that were already, yeah, I received the project with three layers. Oh, you, you are, wow, you're quick. <laughs> And um, we're going to have a listen, listen into these different layers and then have listened for at the whole thing that I mixed. And um, so the, the bass and rhythm part was basically really synth pad-ish. Uh, so stuff like, stuff like this, just somewhere in the middle. Yeah, and this just you'll hear it in the in the uh, mix at the at the end, and then for the second layer, the which was supposed to be harmonies and um, and or mid uh, frequencies, um, there wasn't really harmonies or mid frequencies at all. What what uh, 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 what happened there was uh, there um, was a Game Boy, uh, I, kind of a hacked Game Boy sound card ishy sound, um, which sounded like this or did not actually sound like this, but I'm going to talk to you about that. So that was that. But uh, what you heard just now is already rhythmicized. Um, what I received was not rhythm rhythmicized at all. It was just kind of randomly um, plinking and plonking. And I felt that I wanted to have it rhythmicized. So what I did, I don't know if you can see that, but I cut up uh, all the things and just put them <laughs> put them where I thought they sounded right, which was actually the main part of, of my mixing journey in this piece. Um, and also in the second layer, there was um, a, a train, uh, a the sound of a train, just a sample of a, a train passing by. And what I did to that was make it for the whole duration of the sample pan from left to right. And that was the second layer. And we can listen to it in the end. It's quite prominent in the mix. Um, and then for the third layer, the higher frequencies, these uh, were very very much corresponding with the low layer, um, uh, also sounding really synth pad e, <laughs> stuff like this. So, and then there was also um, a voice part, uh, also recorded through vocoder, um, which sounds like sounded like this. This is quite fitting. Yeah. 
Yeah, so stuff like that. And in terms of mixing, I did not actually do that much to the piece, I have to say. Um, so I, as I said, I cut up the Game Boy sounds and I panned the whole thing, like everything. And I just, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's some rules to that. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I just did what I felt was, sounded good. I, I'm sure somebody can explain to me in, in a couple of years <laughs> how, how that was supposed to go, but I just did what I th uh, thought felt sounded right. And I, of course, um, adjusted the dy dynamic dynamics a little bit. And I actually, to, to this morning, I thought, I don't know if I really did any um, equalizing. I did not, I, I think I did not even do compressing. <laughs> I, I, um, can, we, can we see that quickly? No, I, did I? No. <laughs> so, um, yeah, as, as I said, I did not really do that much, but I thought that also I'm not really educated in mixing, so I just, but I thought that uh, these came very well prepared already. And so this is what I made. Oh, yeah, maybe I did some reverb. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and so this is uh, how it sounded in the very end. With everything. Oh, uh, yeah. No, this is the lyrics part is for the next. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, this is to, if you don't, uh, if you won't. I, I think we should show the audio project, but this is the lyrics and maybe the vocoder is not that clear. So this is in German what's going to be sung. And this is it in English. Yeah, so let's have a listen. Thank you. 
I find this one really, really cool and touching as well. So, um, before I'm finished with this talk, I have to reveal what happened to my uh, Inception style stuff. And we're just going to have a listen um, for the whole project. And for all the people not speaking German, because there's going to be some voice narrating some kind of scene in German, um, we have um, uh, just the information for you that there's going to be the name Fifi um, said aloud a lot. And Fifi is some kind of like a typical stereotypical German uh, uh, name for a small dog, like a terrier or something. And um, uh, this is the English translation. So Fifi nicht die Knochen uh, means Fifi not the bones. And um, yeah, maybe if you want to read it. Yeah, and so let's let's have a listen at what came out of my my baseline. Hol das Stöckchen. Ja, hopp. Da hinten. Da hinten hinter den Blumen. Da, noch ein Stückchen weiter links. Ja, rechts neben dem Baum. Super. Bring das Stöckchen, bring das Stöckchen. Ja, okay. Noch einmal. Komm, hopp. Ja, da vorne, da vorne, links. Ja, bring das Stöckchen. Nein, nicht die Knochen. Noch einmal. Das Stöckchen. Und nicht die Knochen. Hopp. Na komm, lauf, lauf. Bring das Stöckchen. Ja. Schon wieder die Knochen. Ich habe mir so viel Mühe gemacht, die Knochen zu vergraben. Und du gräbst jetzt die ganzen Knochen wieder aus. Was soll ich denn mit dir machen, Fifi? Yeah, so that was what came out of this circle composition project that we did. And at this point, I really, really, really want to encourage you to try this out for yourself. I think it's a really, really fun thing to do. I, I had a lot of fun doing it. And I think it's, um, it's beneficial for s several types of people. Um, I think it could be beneficial p for people who maybe know a lot of the technical stuff and uh, know their way around all the programs but maybe not have uh, not that much experience with creating music themselves or even people who have experience but everybody gets to this point where you like anxious to just start and have the feeling that you don't have any ideas to to just from out of the blue and i think this concept really jump starts you into just doing it 
um, because it breaks down the music into these building blocks and makes it easier to um, to you know if you're if you just okay just the bass line just what can some bass line so it's just easier that way and um, um, yeah and also for people who are already really experienced with creating music and maybe just do their own thing a lot and in German we, we would say kochen im eigenen Saft so stewing in their own juice a lot. <laughs> um, um, because since it's a collaborative practice, you're forced to um, engage with ideas of different people, maybe people, maybe styles of music that you're really not used to, and you have to come up with something that fits or really doesn't fit this and contrasts with it. With it. And I really think this uh, fires up your creativity because it's in a way it it limits you limits you. And this is always a really good thing, I think, for creativity. Um, I, uh, yeah, and you have to, it's kind of like a problem solving um, adventure. And, um, and yeah, I think it's very beneficial in learning stuff through that, musically and creatively learning stuff through that. And uh, just, there's an output, <laughs> which <laughs> it's always is great, or maybe not always. And um, uh, we had to talk about that this morning. And um, yeah, so I just want to encourage you, try it out for yourself, grab three buddies, and just do it. <laughs> yeah, so that's circle composition for you. <laughs> Any questions? Is it? Uh, look if it's muted or not. Okay, yeah. Uh, did I get the picture clear? Every one of you has made a base layer, a low frequency layer, yeah. a mid layer, yeah. a high frequency yeah. layer. So at the end, there were four arrangements, four songs. Yes. And it's going in the circle. It yes. reminds me of this uh, uh, surrealist game where they uh, made uh, uh, some little sketches. Then they folded uh, yes. uh, the paper and uh, uh, you see only some few lines. And yeah. the next one is creating with these few lines the next uh, part of the sketch. Is it's it kind of like that, but you, you see what already was done. Uh, and who has, uh, who has defined who is capable... Uh, who is uh, uh, responsible for which layer? Uh, this is just the the this this like who's where in the circle. Just I, I think we did that randomly even, um, and ah, okay. um, so this just out of the concept there follows the. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah, and in the end, uh, uh, well, I was overwhelmed by all those theoretical considerations that you have reported about it. Uh, me myself, I would have heard uh, 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 all these uh, uh, parts, and then uh, it's just inspirational. So, wow, very impressing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Other questions, or maybe if you you can, since Niels and Chris are all, uh, also in the room, if you have questions for uh, the other stuff, the stuff that I did not do, you can maybe ask them if you if you're interested in something. Um, not really a question, but just a comment since it, uh, just to have it on tape. Um, I think because you mentioned it before with uh, like it's all like no compression, no nothing. Yes. Um, I think there's value in that. Um, it sounds good with just just the dynamics and not even the, the EQ um, to have it sound good like that because um, I think I speak for a lot of um, electronic music producers that like really, really get lost in uh, okay, how do I make this sound uh, as loudly as possible as, as, uh, and pack it into the mix and uh, all, all the terminology uh, when you're really focused on uh, the instrument sounding good? So just this, wanted to mention that. Yeah, this comes out of just who I am and what I can and can't do. So I'm a conductor. I'm used to leveling <laughs> the dynamics of people and uh, telling them how to do it differently and i'm really not an expert in mixing and so i i'm equalizing because of do a lot of voice recording i'm i'm familiar with that i don't i actually don't know why i didn't do that here i don't remember but um um yeah so this is just out of who i and i think this again is showing 
everybody can do something like that. And you will be lacking in some parts, but you will bring something to the table that only you can do. And this will come out in this kind of project. Yeah. Yes, hi. Uh, when you did the Nolan stuff, uh, where... The you what get stuff? The Nolan stuff yeah, you yes. talk about, um, where you get the import from, uh, the WAV files or MP3 files? Uh, so uh, as I said, from MuseScore. MuseScore comes with the library already. Um, so I, d I initially d only wanted to do the uh, sheet music there, but it comes with a library where you can listen what you're jotting down. And uh, this is, I, I, I actually don't really know where they get their library from, but um, this is actually not that bad. It's uh, free and free for use? Not anymore, I guess. Yeah. But it is still? Okay, yeah. Maybe <laughs> give him the microphone. <laughs> okay, I was just saying that uh, this was probably Muse Gore three. version 3, yes. and now it's at version 4, and they have a new uh, sound font library for or orchestral sound. So if you use that, it wouldn't sound the same anymore, but they still have the old one. So. Yeah, and it's, uh, as you heard, I think, I mean, for this purpose, quite okay. Yeah. Yeah. And while I have the mic microphone, uh, this is the score, by the way, for the for what I did there. Yeah. So sorry. Oh, what? Wow. So many instruments. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was a lot of instruments, and I just exported it in three in four groups. So, yeah, <laughs> you you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry. Back to the uh, Am Gleis yes. track. Yes. Uh, the last, I, the, the I, second yeah. to last one. For the bass layer, I just used. Uh, uh, some Roland um, 909 samples and a Behringer Pro 1 synthesizer. Uh, and that sounds really good. It's, uh, it has that dark quality that uh, fits the theme of the track really well, I think. The, the theme that you created because you were the first person doing anything in the, on the track. Yeah, yeah, I was imagining doing something like Duran Duran. <laughs> 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 yeah, but something totally different came out of it, yes. Yeah. There was uh, some somebody, I think, one or two, no? Yeah? No, okay. So, yeah. Nils, do, do you want to say something about whatever you did there? You don't have to. I just wanted to give you the opportunity if you wanted to. No. <laughs> yeah, so if there's not any more questions, I guess we're, we're, we're finished. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening.